Well, you figure out who you're kicking out into the aisles to make space, I shall make a start. So, um, data query. Uh, in, in order to, to sort of give you an idea of, uh, of um, where I'm going here, the first thing to... So a note from the organiser, next time, start the schedule for the talk you actually want to go to and you'll get a bigger run. Um, in order to actually give you an idea of what I'm, what I'm trying to do here, it's, it's kind of necessary to go um, back in time temporarily um, to where all of this sort of started from. Um, in the very early days of Shadowcat, before um, anybody, anybody really even realised we existed, um, what we originally started off doing was... Um, fairly sort of straightforward um, web dev and custom e-commerce builds for people. Um, back in that era, the, tool, the um, tools of choice tended to be Maple and Class DVI. Now, I am, I am hoping at least most of the people in here have successfully forgotten Maple. Um, Class DVI leaves a, leaves a well, yeah, you, 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 you don't forget Class DVI no matter how much you drink. Trust me, I have tried. Uh, um, and then um, I, I, I fell across the existence of Catalyst, wandered onto irc.build.org, and then never left somehow. Uh, it, it, it seems to be like that as um, the Pearl IRC network. Um, but still, the, in, in back in uh, 05, 06, the standard model um, for Catalyst was Class TBI. And well, it did a lot more than pretty much anything else that was currently available. Unless you're going to include Tangram, and um, yes, Tangram made all sorts of fascinating hard things very possible. Um, but your brain melted within about 10 minutes every time you tried to do something simple. So, Class DBI was very much the popular thing at the time. Um, the, 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 the trouble was, I mean, it, it was built... First off, um, it was written by Schwern, which doesn't entirely help because he doesn't actually like databases very much. So he was trying to make it so that he didn't have to see that the database was there. So it, it had all of the traditional application developers written this library things. Um, single column primary keys, you were in, joins were something that you know were a little bit scary and you didn't want to do very often, and all of this sort of stuff. Um, you, you couldn't do query composition because Class DBI, your means of actually getting a search was a class method. Um, same problem you have with Rose DB object now. Um, although Rose DB object does get a lot of other things right. Um, uh, you, 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 couldn't get, you couldn't do multi-column primary keys properly, which meant that if you were trying to model a many-many relationship, it was infinitely painful. Um, I did actually write a class DBI relationship many-to-many -many at one point. Um, and then looked at it and what it did to the database and decided I wasn't releasing it because it, I, was too, I was too upset by the code. Um, and the other thing was, anytime you wanted anything complicated... <laughs> anytime you wanted to do anything complicated, um, you ended up having to generate a chunk of SQL that would then get Indeed, I'm a DBI was the um, superclass that provided this, and it had this wonderful thing called set SQL, where you provided a named piece of SQL which then got filtered through sprintf, because oh, sprintf is obviously the best SQL metaprogramming tool ever. Thank you so much. Sorry? I blanked my tail until just now. Uh, you're welcome. Um, the problem that we, that we ran into was we, we had customers asking for fairly reasonable facts. And I go, I go, okay, right. It is possible to bend class DBI to do this. It is possible to bend class DBI to do this. This is going to take me about two days. And it will probably work. 
You go to the customer and go, this, this relatively simple thing is going to take two days and it will probably work. And the customer goes, yeah, I'm not sure I wanted the feature that badly. Which, entirely fair. Um, and the other thing was, um, for, for reasons I think of being the only person willing to do it, I ended up being the main person who supported Class DBI on that catalyst. So I, I was literally spending two or three hours a day um, on IRC, basically avoiding writing Class DBI code by helping other people fix theirs. <laughs> Um, and the, 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 there came a certain point where I, I, I just completely lost my temper. I mean, you know, can you imagine that? Um, <laughs> so that was second of the third second of any of this. <laughs> um, said, said to um, Mark and to our customer at the time, well, I'm, I'm going dark for a couple of days. There has got to be something better I can manage to do here. Um, and two days later, due to hijacking the class DBI test suite, um, I came up with what was then 0.01 of DBIX class. Uh, which was, well, I mean, at, at that point, we did, the, the very original code base didn't actually even have, have the result set stuff in it. But what it did have was multi column primary keys and joins, and actually expected you to want to join things a lot, uh, which was a, a decent start. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I, I could necessarily describe it as saner. Um, it, it, it was certainly significantly more powerful, and I managed to at least make <coughs> mostly different design mistakes. Um, a fair few of which have now been fixed, and a fair few of which we're still stuck with, which is why I've been working on this. Um, now, in the, in the interim, there was a Class DBI suite. It was originally written by Christian Hansen, um, which uh, originally just did um, caching and plugged SQL abstract in. Uh, yeah, just, 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 just go and find a bit of staircase to sit on. Okay, man, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, I mean, the, the part of why all of this got started is because somebody went, oh, you can't possibly do active record style prefetch in um, class DBI. Of course, now somebody said it's impossible. About 24 hours later, I committed code to sweep to do it. Um, so that was class DBI and SQL abstract. Um, with DBIX class, we kept using SQL abstract, subclassed it, did all sorts of uh, interesting things to it um, to make it work. Eventually, the DBIX class team took over maintainership of it. Um, after the original author, I finally tracked him down after three years and he apologised profusely because he put the wrong email on the desk. Uh, <laughs> if we'd managed to adopt it two years earlier, life would have been much simpler, but never mind. Um, but I, SQL Abstract is it's still, it's still the basis of most of the SQL generators that people are using. Um, but, the, the, the basic problem with SQL Abstract is it, it's very much focused around the surface DWIM syntax, the data structures that you pass into it. So there's about five different forms of data structure that will produce the same thing. Um, and that's a single pass conversion to SQL. It's basically a, it, it was pretty much a single nested method. Um, Long Dami refactored it a bit because he was getting completely lost trying to extend it for DBIX data model. Um, and then made it three layers of recursive methods. So it was a little bit easier to read, but still, still, the, the, the basic problem is you can't introspect it. Because there's five different ways of doing the same thing, and there's no normalization stage. In order to actually do anything with an SQL abstract tree, you have to parse the entirety of the SQL abstract syntax. Um, and doing that again, having already worked on the SQL abstract code itself, really didn't appeal. Um, but it, you run into all sorts of problems with that. You, you can't easily do column renaming, because a column name can appear in about six different places, most of them sort of consistent with each other. Um, again, you, you can't do table renaming. Um, and you, you, there's just so many transforms that you can't do. I think this is why in DBIX class you can rename a column accessor, but you still have to pass through the original column name to the search structure because that's going into SQL abstract. And at that point it's basically opaque. So I, I, I came to the conclusion that we needed an explicit layer. 
So you, you can take the Dwin syntax and unroll it to one explicit representation that's designed for computers to work on, um, and then transform from that to the final query. So I, I worked this out in, in 2008. Um, start, started thinking about it and tried various designs that didn't particularly get anywhere. Um, but, but very much aiming for an explicit, um, sort of not so much an abstract syntax tree as an abstract query tree. Um, the, the idea being that your query got expressed as a very raw, very explicit, not, not, not something you would want to write as a human, data structure um, that we could then write code to operate on. So yes, this has taken me over four years, and GBJK is almost certainly going to complain in the questions that I still haven't shipped it to CPAN, uh, but uh, as you will see later, I'm going to blame Riva Sushi for that. I think that it's been updated a lot, so I'm happy. As long as you can get it, it's okay, it doesn't need to be on CPAN. Screw you. <laughs> it, 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 it's getting there, it's, it's just... Um, while, while, while I will be talking about providing compatibility with a huge amount of insane SQL, there's certain things like the Microsoft Access support that I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. The one thing I am glad of is that there, there is actually a DBIX class backend that scares me more than that one. Which is somebody actually, um, some years ago committed support for it running against DB2 on an AS400. <laughs> but I don't think that has any SQL rewriting in it, so I'm going to ignore that part. Um, so, uh, meanwhile, uh, DBIX class got all sorts of extra features. Um, I mean, one, one of the things that, that fascinates me is um, a lot of the stuff that when DBIX class was uh, first released were features that, pe that people were like, oh wow, that works! And then now, now, now you, the equivalent response is, well, yeah, of course that works. Why doesn't this hugely complicated thing work? Because everything else does. <laughs> because it's not as easy as it looks. Um, and, yeah, Pearl, Pearl, Pearl 6 has the same problem, although um, apparent, apparently they, 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 they've been having this problem for slightly more than four years. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, trying try to deal with this with this stuff. The way it was, was the first point at which I started getting sympathetic to the poor bastards working on that. Anyway, <coughs> um, so the, the first attempt at SQL Abstract Two was um, oh, Justin Hunter and Ash Berlin, um, and they did this amazingly nicely, carefully modelled thing using MooseX Declare, because obviously MooseX Declare makes things saner. Uh, <laughs> That was that. I, I, I do tend to feel that um, that that was kind of the Perl community's last. Let's be as clever as possible phase. You know the old saying: if you if you write the code as cleverly as possible, you're now too <coughs> stupid to debug it. Um, which is probably true of pretty much everything built on Devil Declare, because I wrote that and I can't debug it. Uh, <coughs> anyway. Um, so it, it was a bit over-engineered, and um, because of, because yeah, Moose, Moose X Declare manages to uh, take even longer to compile than Moose, um, it was a little bit slow to start up, um, which meant that, you, unfortunately, DBIX class does have a bunch of users using it as CGI. We actually have users using it as CGI deployed over FTP, because Germans. <laughs> seriously, seriously, I, I, I do not know why, but in Germany there appears to be two sorts of hosting. Full dedicated server and CGI over FTP. Um, anyway, so, <coughs> so I, I looked at this and Rob Kinion had written quite a nice specification that was sort of mostly right. So I started again based on that. Um, uh, back in 2010. Um, got a basic code base built out that did actually pretty much work. Um, move on to 2011 because, believe me, I'll, it, it, I'll, I'll, after wrangling a certain amount of database code, you do need a break for several months, preferably. Um, and I got SQL Abstract ported and passing all of its tests. And DBIX class completely exploded. 
And they, they, this should come as no great surprise. Um, because of the, the problem was, because of the time that we'd had when we didn't have any control over SQL abstract, DBIX class hooks into all sorts of bits of the SQL abstract internals. I mean, you know, I, 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 say, I say here DBIX class violates the encapsulation. Um, it, it would probably be more accurate to simply say that DBIX class violates SQL abstract. <laughs> Um, Repeatedly. Yeah. Well, I, I, I only did it two or three times, and then you got up to the form restraining order. Uh, I'll be showing you some of Reba Sushi's code in a bit. Um, so, 2012, I went, hang on a minute, why, why am I writing OO by, by hand here? Um, and switched it over to Moo, which had stabilised somewhat by that point. Um, and I'm, that, that really did help, um, because so, suddenly I could, I could write Perl 500 from later than 1999. Uh, so, um, back to that fundamental problem. So, I've, I've rewritten most of those parts of the DBIS class internals. Um, allow me to show you some of the stuff that we had to do. And th th this is back to the, my first ever DBIS class talk was called Database Haters Anonymous and you were about to understand why. So, a sensible database, um, limiting the query, looks something like that. Everybody recognizes that syntax, right? Wait, can I spell syntax? Allow me to introduce you to the ANSI SQL standard way of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's going on here is, you get row number, which gives you the number of that row within the query set, so you have to start off with an inner select that's your actual query, then you subselect it to add the row number onto it, and I, I don't honestly even understand what the over part does. I, I, I just plugged in whatever the DBX class code already has and it appears to work. Um, and then you can use the row number index to do the limiting. And I mean, it's really efficient as well, honest. Uh, so how, how does DBX class currently do this? This, 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 is, this, this, is, this is where we get to the fun part. Um, so, first off, <laughs> I know I'll use regular expressions. <laughs> so, you rip the, the select query off the front. Um, then you start matching for things that look like an, an identifier. <laughs> Once you've done that, you get to the easy part. <laughs> oh look, let's print out. You'd be better off just randomly perturbing the SQL until the eval doesn't return an error. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I did consider trying that, but it turns out that Reba Sushi actually wrote tests for this. <laughs> That's actually how I wrote extract method. Um, so <laughs> yeah, an un unqualified call name pulls the table name off the front because you won't be able to add the table name because you're going to be needy in subselect. Um, and then you go into the um, order by stuff because you need to track the order by as well because you're going to need to be able to lift that out of the query if the result set's going to come back in the right order. And <laughs> right. Still that's an active record in Ruby. <laughs> right, but there's, there's, there's a reason why uh, most other ORM developers tend to call that inactive ripcord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so, 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 far, so far as we can tell, the primary purpose in life of active record is to make us all feel better about our code bases. Uh, but yeah, uh, this, is, this is where we get into database hating. Anyway. Um, so, back to the query. Um, but, so, the point of all this was, was rather than having this hilarity, let's have an explicit query tree. So, um, pure data structure, no type, and then keys containing various bits. So, as an example, that bit of SQL unrolls to that data structure. You know, so you've got operator greater than two values, and it, like, you, know, you, you would not want to type this yourself, but actually having it that explicit means that you, cannot, you can use code on it in a way that works sensibly. Um, 
And then having, having messed around with it for a while, I actually went back and started building helpers to construct things like this. So um, you've, got a, you've got a function exporter called operator that will just give you an operator node. So the, the actual code working on it, does, again, it doesn't have to see the straight data structure. Um, so uh, with our SQL abstract, well, remember I, I was saying that the whole point of this was I didn't want to have, an S, have to pass the SQL abstract style more than once. So what, we, what I've done is split SQL abstract up and you have a converter object and, uh, which converts SQL abstract syntax through to data query syntax. Uh, so that means that the SQLA methods then just become tell the converter, take the SQLA syntax, give me a data query tree and then I can hand it to the data query code to render. Um, so the current main render is SQL naive. I've called it naive because basically it, this is the one that makes its best guess about everything. Um, I'm, at some point, um, for specific dialects, we'll probably end up extracting half of that code into roles and having database specific renderers that compose those back in. Um, yeah, I've got seven minutes by my argument. Um, so the select rendering. Um, you can basically, intersperse is just basically a, a list join, as in it does a join thing, but you end up with an array instead of a concatenated string. So um, that lets you uh, put the aliases together um, and then do the formatting. And you know, you, 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 you can tell this code had started, had started to get complicated by the fact that I actually needed to write a comment to remember what I was doing. Um, <laughs> Not, not, not something I do often enough, perhaps, but never mind. Um, and the eventual result is just an SQL string and values. Um, so you start off with this, end up with that, and you notice you then have a value node um, that has the value in it but is still typed, uh, which means that we can do DBI binding, which is relatively important for... Um, for various databases that actually care about data types um, and means that hopefully we'll be able to get things like the Oracle blob support to still work afterwards. Um, so render DQ um, is literally just taking that structure and then that massages it back into what SQL abstract expects. Um, so you end up with it still looking like it was SQL abstract doing all of the works so all of the existing code works. Um, last time I got people to check, all of the people with SQL abstract subclasses, their subclasses still worked against this version of the code. So, uh, obviously not counting the DBIX class ones, but I was, I, 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 I was um, aren't so much subclasses as BBSM classes, right? Uh, so, um, outside of SQLA, uh, I've been working on a nice declarative interface. Um, using your, the, the traditional Perl approach of, when in doubt, use blocks, use Ampersam prototypes, operator overloading, and autoload, because obviously that's the way for that's the way to get nice and simple code. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that renders through to the um, sort of query tree you want. Um, so a relatively simple example. Uh, straight up select query. Hopefully that one's obvious. Um, and in the where clause in, um, that's where the operator overloading comes in because the thing returned by dollar underscore error year overloads everything so it can then return an operator node um, so you end up with the condition. And it's all just Perl, but it's Perl that looks very similar to the final SQL. <coughs> which I'm hoping um, is going to give us a chance to use data query in projects where the developers are scared of RRMs. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sick of watching people who don't want the full RRM reinvent sort of the back quarter of DBIX class again and again and again. So I'd much rather have it separated out so that they can just depend on the, on the damn thing and we can share the code. Because no, nobody deserves to have to deal with this much database compatibility in more than one code base at once. Um, but be, because it's just Perl, um, you can literally do, do things like that to get dynamic query generation. 
Um, joins work pretty much as you'd expect. Um, and nicely, because it's still just um, trees being passed around, you can actually do um, limited forms of chaining um, and query composition within the declarative interface. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's tagging an extra wear clause on the end. Now, the limit dialects. So, reasonably straightforward query. I mean, not quite as straightforward as the earlier ones, but it'll do. So, same databases, that needs to end up as that. How about the insane ones? Well... Which one? Uh, I'm going to show row number over because it's the funniest. Do you have top as well? I'd like to see that. That one's actually relatively simple Is compared it? to this one. Yeah. So, um, what this does, first thing it does is the subquery remap. And that's the fun part. Subquery remap starts by doing subquery remap select. Wherein, instead of doing 3 billion regular expressions, we can go through the query nodes, pull things out, generate aliases, and you end up with a data structure that represents the original select list renamed in such a way that it's going to survive through a subselect. Um, having done that, we then map up the aliases and then go through the order by clause and basically provide names for all of those. At which point, that gets handed back to the top thing, um, which can then assemble the query. And uh, okay, uh, provided you're not sort of scared of, of slightly lispy code, you can sort of see that you've got a structure here of the um, subselects work, the subselects being nested together, and the end result. It's that! And it works! On the same freaking data tree without a single regular expression. And this, 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 this is the point at which I, I am saying, yes, we still have a few, te a few tests to pass in DBIX class, but having got that to work, um, that demonstrates that we are going to be able to do alias and column renaming because we've just done it to make that work at all. If I can make that work, then I'm fairly confident that pretty much everything else will eventually. Um, it, at, at this point, it, it, it's a simple matter of programming rather than I am scared shitless that this design isn't going to work and I'm going to spend another four years hating everything. Um, I thought you did that anyway. Well... <laughs> Moving on to hating other things. Precisely. <laughs> there are so many other things to hate. Yeah. So... Um, the repositories are all on git.shadowcat. SQL Abstract and DBIX class have a branch called DQ, uh, both of which pretty much pass their tests. Um, data query itself, I'm probably going I, I, I keep, I keep procrastinating shipping it because I'm worried that I'm going to find another design mistake. Um, but I think that declarative interface is nice enough now that if I package that up and stick a big ass, this is experimental, if it turns out Matt made a stupid mistake, he will break all of your code, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, then then um, I can probably push it to CPAM, maybe sometime this year. Or maybe it will turn out to be Christmas and I'll be back. <laughs> anyway, um, that's, yeah. that, that, that's where we're up to. Um, I would encourage you to have a look at the code and have a play around with it. It's honestly the other, provided you stay out of the um, limit dialect stuff, it's, most of it's not actually that scary. Um, I mean, you know, I, I can put it down and come back to it six months later and still understand what everything's doing. Um, the, the, the limit dialects I sort of pull up, what the hell is that? Right, run the tests, see what SQL it produces. Oh god, that database needs that, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's getting there. Um, do we have any questions? Oh, was there a reason you needed to deal with the declarative syntax up front, or was it just some shiny challenge you could use to procrastinate against shipping? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I can get your shipping question there. <laughs> I, I covered them all at once, but seriously, was there a reason you got the declarative syntax up front? No, um, I did tests way easier. Yeah, exactly. I got really bored of writing the, of writing the huge explicit hash ref structure for my test suite. So I decided, basically, the, uh, the, the, the declarative syntax evolved out of 
help the subroutines that I wrote for writing tests against. And then and you if only you have to test that once. If you can't cook, cook the declarative syntax for your syntax tree, you've fucked up your syntax tree. So right. it's, it's a test of your design as well. If you can't come up with a nice syntax for writing it, then you've got it wrong. Yeah, um, here we go. Yeah, and the, um, the declarative stuff is, you know, not too bad. bad. Yeah, it, it's, it's really not that complicated. Um, except possibly for that part. Um, that, that was mostly in honour of Tom. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, and, the, and the other thing is the um, expression builder, um, overload building, and also that is all. It's honestly not that. It honestly wasn't that complicated. And the thing is, what I want to be doing is, as soon as we get this into DBIC, I want to start surfacing parts of this syntax um, as being passable to um, DBIC classes search routine, uh, because providing people with a bit of extra shininess as well. Um, strikes me as the best way to convince them to test the dev releases and shake out whatever remaining bugs we're going to have in it. Which is why being able to compose where is, is very nice as well, isn't it? The adware to an existing statement, you know, Yeah. Have it, have it, and, and also, um, also, I mean, it, one, one of the things I, I think we've, we've, we've suffered from noticeably um, uh, in terms of DBI, so certainly um, Jess has had huge amounts of fun with this is trying to take somebody who knows SQL and get them from there to being able to understand DBIC. Um, and I'm thinking if we can start off with a declarative syntax that looks pretty much like SQL, but starts giving you the query composition stuff, and then build upwards from there, you, you'll hopefully get a smooth path to people actually understanding why they might want the full ORM um, in a way that lets them ba basically take it one step at a time but because in the end, all of the query rendering is being handled by the same code, there, there's no sharp disconnect. You, you can go from pretty, from pretty much as high level to as low level as you want, provided you keep data query as the, as the, as the sort of lowest level before it goes out of your control. Um, then I'm hoping that people will find that fairly fun to work with. It's a in 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 there. Sorry? It's in in there. <laughs> Not there. Uh, not in the declarative syntax, but it does exist. Um, but are you going to, because you're going to bubble up that declarative stuff up to DBX class, it'd be handy if one of those things was a fancy in, in operator. Yes. Um, figuring out how to do, how to do things like that that don't really have a direct equivalent. In yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't particularly looked at. Um, I mean, I, I suspect we might end up using something like um, the junction syntax um, for that, because I, I, I can quite comfortably have the overloading um, spot there's a junction on the other side and do something intelligent. But um, I, I've kind of avoided that because that's, that starts getting into all sorts of design decisions about exactly how the declarative stuff should work, as opposed to making it work well enough to get it. Assessment. Sooner or later, somebody's going to say, why doesn't my at rows equal select blah work? Sorry? So I, 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 I'm, not, I'm maybe not following. Is this actually producing a representation of a query, or actually doing the query? Um, the current code produces a representation so of the query. So at the moment, if, if somebody who doesn't understand what it's doing goes, my at rows equal select blah from where, they're going to get very confused. Yeah, but they've got used to running. Yeah, it true. But, before, but it seems to be the, 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 the logical final step for the sugar is to make that work. Yes, that, that, that's, that, that's where I want to go eventually, but um, that wouldn't have helped me writing the test for the yeah, yeah. yeah, glass shit, so I kind of ignored it until later. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happens if you need to get your hands dirty and do something like put a query plan on it? What do you specifically mean by put a query? Well, I mean, I've, I used Rogueway years ago and I very rapidly went off Rogueway's model of doing what you're trying to do because um, it took a lot of control from the database writing side thing away from me 
and it's the thing that really, really, really worries me about using this at all, um, is that your CV2 produce something which is going to run across multiple databases, and um, I'm not sure that's necessarily a good ambition to have, because if you're writing Sybase code, you want to do it in a fundamentally different way than writing Oracle code. Um, and when you get a problem, like your query's running really slowly, it's much harder to find it in something like this when you're coming across somebody else's code. And then when you've got to fix it, you've got to put some sort of query plan on top of what somebody else has done. So you need some sort of hook in there to say, the optimizer, hey, this is what I actually want you to do, rather than what you've gone away by default. I mean, there are also performance objections to doing it, because you're doing everything as well as well. Just find certain styles of application that most of the code which I would deal with would be installed procedures. I wouldn't want to be um, generating this sort of stuff in the first place. Okay. Um, that was about four questions at once. I'm going to try and answer them all. Um, first thing, just because um, you are sharing a lot of code between the stuff that generates two multiple different databases syntaxes doesn't imply that I expect people to try and write one piece of code that is performant against every single possible database. Because you're right, that just doesn't work a lot of the time. Um, especially when you're trying to support a database and MySQL. Um, <laughs> um, because, you know, mo mo most, most of the standard things that you'll do on anything industrial grade will make the MySQL query optimizer and fill its diaper. So you, you're going to have to have different code in any case. The, the point here is to have a shared toolkit for, go for composing together something that lets you end up with the query that you originally wanted. Um, and one of the things that um, we've always done in DBX class is at any point um, during the query generation you can plug in a chunk of literal SQL which is basically, look, ju just put that bit of SQL there, I know what I'm doing, you don't. Um, and that's supported in this as well, we have a literal name type. Uh, which has a language type attached to it. So all, all of the things like, uh, is, it, is, it, is it Oracle that, um, where they thought it would be a really great idea to put the um, optimizer hints in magic comments? Yeah. Right, <laughs> so obviously your generic renderers aren't going to be able to handle that. Um, a literal SQL chunk will handle that. Um, and if anybody who's doing that wants to create an actual node type for it and subclass the renderer so we can handle it properly, then yeah, cool, go ahead. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not. I mean, essentially, the renderer is plural. And yeah, and at the heart of this, there's a query tree that you're going to find it easier to change now. That's the whole point, because you're saying, um, how do I optimize it for all of these different databases? Because I'm going to have to use different mechanisms for each one. But the point is. The query tree is now normalized. It's always going to be the same thing, and it's always understandable. So you can do whatever you like to it. Whereas before, you couldn't, because you didn't have anything. Right, I mean, other, other than the stored procedure thing, the list of objections you just gave me are a list of objections that people always provide um, for not even trying DBIS class in the first place. But I have, um, in 99% of cases, when they actually do try it properly, rather than just assuming it doesn't work, um, it turns it out no, I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming that I'm, I'm going to have intractable problems, which um, it's fine if you're dealing with nice, easy SQL like you're doing in the examples, but you get fundamentally different ways you're going to approach writing Oracle. You're going to write Oracle, which goes, okay, even given that I don't think you've got proper cursor support in there, so a lot of Oracle code that you want to write, you wouldn't even start to write it with this sort of methodology. Uh, I. I'm not seeing how you would... Cursor, cursor stuff in Oracle is normally that you're going to declare a cursor against a query and then work through it, yes? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you'd have to do that in PLSQL. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that I write, I wouldn't even think that I could start to attempt to write in this. Is my point. I'm not saying this isn't good for certain styles of application. No, yep. Query, query by example, um, web tool, yeah, this might work for it. I would still have reservations about the fact that it's very hard to get in, and even if I'm just writing against Sybase, putting my performance 
Kinsey and Forsyth base after the fact because you've generated the query and then I've got to go in and try and find, uh -huh. oh, I've got to put What do you mean in. I've generated the query? The query is being generated according to your instructions. If your code doesn't put the hints in uh, at the point in which it generates the query, you have to put it after the fact. That means your code is buggy. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the design here. Well, no, it means that you have fundamental problems with databases not always doing the right thing. Sometimes you have to come along later on patch um, what the optimizer thinks is a good idea. Well, yeah, you, you always have that problem, but the, 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 point, the, point, the point of this is to, make it, is to make it possible to solve that sort of problem in less lines of code. Can I say at this point, Bob, <coughs> this is not a conversation for here. Uh, really, the point is that DBIC is not exclusive. You can always grab your deviation, just do whatever you want. The point is that you can use DBIC to write the boring parts, and the parts that you need to optimizable are parts that you're going to write by hand. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. At, at, the point, at the point at which it's at the point at which it's pure database site behind the stored procedure, then um, I think the uh, the answer at that point is I need to make sure there's an elegant way in this of calling stored procedures and getting the right data back. Um, people who are doing stored procedure oriented development can keep doing what they're already doing because they're already outside of the Perl application. So I, I And you can always extend the syntax tree for your dialect of yes. SQL. This is this is this is this is the bread and butter syntax tree for this sort of stuff. You can have a smarter renderer that deals with the fact that things are gonna want printing. You can can have a smarter yeah, render that deals with the fact that support for syntax, for instance. Yeah, that, that actually, I mean, essentially, this is compiler technology. We now have a syntax tree, and we now have a very basic thing that turns that into a SQL level statement. But there is no reason you couldn't have an optimizing pass that goes, actually, whatever that may be, or there's no reason you can't have an advising pass that can't do that. There's no reason you can't extend the declarative syntax to use, to use the extended abstract syntax tree that puts the hints that you need in, in a way that you can manipulate, turn on, turn off, all that sort of stuff by using a smarter render at the back end because you know the render you've got. It's just compiler tech and it's compiler tech version 1.0. I'm, I'm, I'm actually fairly convinced that I could use some of this to generate um, at least PL, PG, SQL stored procedures. I'm just, but at, at that point, if you're, if you're doing stored procedure oriented development, I suspect fundamentally you are not the target audience for this anyway. Um, ex, ex, except for the fact that, the, that um, we need to make sure that this provides a nice elegant way of calling the stored procedures so that you don't end up with application developers whining and wanting to bypass the stored procedures and having to be punched. Uh, <laughs> but um, other than, um, but yeah, I'm, fun, fun, fundamentally, the optimizer hint stuff I've already seen being done in production with VBIX class, so this has to support that part. Um, as for the rest, I don't know, ask me in another four years. Thank you very much.